Hello and welcome, Pastor John here. We are here back in our Going Through the Bible series. And today we're going to be looking at Exodus. So open your Bibles and turn your Bible to Exodus chapter 3, verses 14 to 15. Exodus chapter 3, verses 14 to 15. When the Old Testament, so... Here we go. God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to the to Moses, Say to this people to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. God bless the reading of his word, Exodus 3, 14 to 15. What's in a name? What's in a name? So a little bit of background here. We have the book of Exodus. Author is Moses. And it's the second book of uh, what we call the Pentateuch, the Pentateuch. And um, <clears throat> there are five uh, books in the Pentateuch, and this is the second one. It was written around 1600 to 1440 BC. So what happens in this book, it's, it's a really, it's an amazing book. And I encourage you to read the entire book, of course, Exodus. Um, so what happens here, it starts um, with the birth and early life of Moses. So amazing. So that's the birth and early life of Moses. Um, the Israelites are delivered from, from Egypt. That's the parting of the Red Sea you, you may know about, right? And um, God gives Moses the covenant law. So there are specific instructions um, also about building the tabernacle for God's holy presence. And uh, what happens then in the wilderness uh, is uh, that the Israelites are rebellious and they rebel against God. And uh, the, um, then God's divine judgment um, is revealed, but also his mercy. So, but before all this takes place, what is happening here? So the topic here is the name of God and what it means. So what's in a name? So the context here is, <clears throat> let us look at another passage here. There's a short summary of the burning bush. And um, God is revealing himself to Moses at this moment. You may have heard of the burning bush. And um, God calls and commissions Moses here. So to help us understand what God is saying here in our initial opening passage uh, to Moses, uh, let us take a look at the larger context. So that's the beginning of chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. Exodus Chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. I encourage you to open your Bible, come along, and read along with me here um, as we read Exodus, the, the third chapter, uh, verses 1 to 9. <clears throat> One day, Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There... The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go to see it. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, 
I am aware of their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites now live. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. God bless you on this word. All right. Wow. So here we have God uh, calling and also commissioning Moses um, before the, um, the uh, Exodus uh, out of Egypt, right before the Red Sea parting. And um, it's um, better to understand here that we focus on what it means that God has a name. So we want to understand that God has a name. That means God is a personal God. Not one of many gods, he's the one and only God and true God. So he's a personal God and he knows us all by name. So he calls Moses, Moses, Moses. So in our Bible uh, text, which we just read, um, we see that God, is, God says, I am who I am. I am has sent me to you. Okay, so when God says, I am, that's a big one, all right? That's a very important uh, uh, verse and phrase here. I am is an absolutely divine name, and it appears only in the Bible, nowhere else. It's very important to understand that, right? So it's one of the uh, distinctives of the Bible that makes it very different from uh, man-made text. Here we have uh, God made and God revealed texts, uh, um, which we would call the Bible. So I am is an absolutely divine name. And this links us to the New Testament from the, um, from the Old Testament, where we just read to the New Testament in the Gospel of John, where Jesus uses the same I am, uh, I am statements. So for example, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the vine. So God bless you his word. That's all in the Gospel of John. So Jesus is not just making a divine claim here, but he is saying that he is the same one and only God who's revealing himself to Moses here in our passage. So there's a big one also to consider when Jesus says in John 8, 58, Before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Now there we have the uh, past, present, future. We have the, our eternal God. Uh, basically that Jesus existed before even the creation of anything. Uh, which is really amazing. So that's a very important statement that Jesus makes, making that claim and claiming uh, himself to be uh, who he is as God in the flesh before Abraham was, I am. So it does not end there. So in verse 15 of Exodus, God then says, Say to, this, to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. God bless you in this word. So here Yahweh, that's Y-A-H-W-E-H, -E is also used to represent the biblical pronunciation of Yahweh. So Y-H-W-H, -H, this is the Hebrew name that's revealed to Moses in the book of Exodus, as we just read, when it says, I am who I am. The name Yahweh, that is again, these four, um, four letters, Y-H-W-H, -H, consists of a sequence of consonants, that's Hebrew, Yod, He, Wa, and He. And that's known as a tetragrammaton. So Yod, he, wa, and he. So 
just as a little side note there, right? But what really matters here is that God reveals himself in his name. That is who he is, namely God eternal. So Yahweh, as we uh, read here, can also be uh, not translated, but transliterated. In other words, the way something sounds as um, the one who causes to exist. The one who causes to exist. So that means that it's God as the creator of everything. God as the creator of everything. So uh, this is where there's a link here again to our Lord Jesus Christ as the creator of the universe. As we read in the Gospel of John in the New Testament. John chapter 1 verses 1 to 4. Uh, John chapter 1 verses 1 to 4. It reads, we read, In the beginning the word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. God bless the reading of His Word. I encourage you to read the first chapter of John, and especially these verses, John 1, 1-4. Um, so here we have a link right between Yahweh and uh, Jesus Christ as revealing himself as the I am. And so here we have the call of Moses that then basically becomes our call as believers, right? I mean, that is to remember um, God's eternal name, um, who God is, right? That he's a person of God, that God is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God and um, who we remember at the Lord's Supper. Right, when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, also called the Eucharist, um, Paul reminds us here in first, uh, first book of Corinthians, uh, 11, chapter 11, 24 to 25. First Corinthians, chapter 11, 24 to 25. And gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. God bless the universe world. So that's the um, application here. Um, as Jesus uh, tells us, uh, celebrates the Last Supper, and we celebrate in remembrance of Jesus, we celebrate the the supper, the Lord's Supper uh, with our Lord Jesus too. So, okay, so all right, so what does it mean for you that God has a name? What does it mean for you that God has a name? It means that God is a personal God. God is a personal God. God cares about us and he desires a personal relationship with us. Paul reminds us here in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. God bless you in your word. So God has revealed himself to us in his name, as he did to Moses, and then in Jesus Christ from now and for all eternity. And uh, Jesus reminds us once more in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.